Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking to you about some makeup products that I just don't like. Now, keep in mind, these are all things that just haven't worked for me. You know, everything's relative and you might love some of these products and, you know, I can't tell you how many, like, makeup fail videos I've watched over the years and I've ended up either already being familiar with some of the products in them and liking them or I end up trying them at some point down the road and they work great for me so just because I don't like these products doesn't mean that you won't like them but I'm just gonna talk to you about what these products are and why I don't like them to kind of give you some context and you know give you an idea of where I'm coming from so you know you might be able to decide if okay like you know she doesn't like that product but it might work well for me because we all have different needs and likes and preferences so you know just keep that in mind these are just my experiences with these products and that doesn't mean that you can't like them or shouldn't like them or you know what I mean? Um, you might enjoy some of these things and that's great. So, you know, it's it's all relative. Just keep that in mind. Thing, I got this pretty recently and the reason that I got it is because I've talked before about how much I love the baking method, you know, where you put on your concealer and then you pack a bunch of powder on top of it and it really um, kind of all meshes together and creates a nice hardcore long wearing look. You know, I love baking and what I've been using for quite a long time now to bake um, is this Benefit Material Girl or Matte Material Girl Loose Powder. Um, I've had this for a long time and for the past like six to eight months or so. Um, that's probably about the time that I really started getting super into baking. Uh, I just had this on hand and I started using it and it works beautifully for baking. The problem with this is this has been gone for a hot minute. They discontinued this like a long time ago. And you know, I just happened to have it and started using it and I like it very much but you can't get it anymore. So A, when I do run out of this I won't be able to repurchase it and B, I wanted to find something that I could maybe recommend to you guys as a good option for baking and you know again you can't get your hands on this so um you know I I really want to find something else if it could be at a drugstore price that's even better so I decided to just um on a whim pick up this product and test it out and it's the NYX HD Studio Photogenic Finishing Powder and this is a very 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 finely milled powder. This is probably the finest loose powder that I've ever worked with. It feels... it has kind of the texture of almost like cornstarch. You know, it's, um, it, it's a little bit slick and kind of slippery. It's not a dry powder. I tried this for baking and it really doesn't work well for baking. It just... it almost adheres to the concealer too well so you can't really dust it off it just you know you can get off a little bit but it just leaves like a film an obvious film of powder wherever you've tried to bake with it and so it doesn't work for that but, but that's not why it's on this list of products that I don't like this is just described as a finishing powder and it does do a nice job just used as a traditional finishing powder. You know, if you take a big fluffy brush and kind of use a light dusting of it all over your face, it does a really nice job of kind of giving you more of a perfected look and just kind of giving your makeup like an extra layer of protection. The reason I don't like this is because... Okay, first of all, every time that I've just picked this up to show it to the camera, I've been getting powder on my hands and on my pants and on my shirt because, okay, I don't even know. I'm going to try to open this to show you the problem. Oh my god. I don't know if you can see, but there's powder going everywhere right now. Okay, can you see all that just coming out? It looks like a snowstorm. 
okay the sifter holes in this are giant and as I mentioned this powder is so fine it's so finely milled and delicate that when you combine these two things really large sifter holes with a super loose delicate powder I mean when I opened this for the first time to use it I wasn't really paying that much attention and I peeled off the little sticker that they have over the holes when you buy it and I just kind of tilted it up like that and literally half the container poured out of here um, into the lid onto my pants onto the rug onto my arms it just went everywhere <laughs> and then because there was so much in the cap that when I put my brush into it I mean powder just went everywhere in like this huge cloud and more went onto the rug and my clothes and my skin and just everywhere that I didn't want it and I mean that's or first of all it's such a waste of product wish I had like filmed it just so you could see the amount of powder that went everywhere just in one use of this Subsequent times, you know, each time that I open it, the same thing happens. More and more powder pours out into the lid. It goes everywhere. And when I put a brush in, wait, can you see that? Can you see that? I mean, it just goes everywhere. And that is wasting so much product, not to mention it makes a huge mess. And, you know, when I'm trying to get ready for the day, the last thing I want to have to do is stop and clean powder out of the rugs and off of my clothes and off of everything. So even though I do kind of like this as a finishing powder, I do like the look that it gives just with a light dusting all over, I'm so reluctant to use it because it's just, it's such a mess. It's so inconvenient. And, I mean, like, my hands are, I mean, it's just, it's just such a mess. So, I, if they would improve the packaging and just make these sifter holes smaller, that would be awesome. Like, I hate, I mean, I'm just screwing the lid back on and can you see all the powder that's like I mean look <laughs> I'm not like trying to do that I'm not you know doing it super hard or applying any pressure but I mean just with normal use so much powder spills out everywhere and it's a huge waste a huge mess and I'm just even though I do like the powder itself I'm so hesitant to use it because I just like I hate the packaging the packaging is so inconvenient so there's powder like all over the table right now the next thing I want to talk about this is something that I have given so many chances to because like I want to like it okay I really I had high hopes for this product when I first got it it's the Rimmel Stay Matte Liquid Mousse Foundation. And when I first started using it, I would just put it on with either like a brush or maybe my fingers or like a dry wedge sponge, you know, those disposable sponges that you can get. And I would find that, I mean, this foundation has really nice coverage. And if you look at here, it's definitely... It's definitely a thick, moussey texture. You know, you can see in this shade is light porcelain. It's a little bit too light for me with my self tanner on, but I mean, it works well for me when I'm just my natural pale self. But, you know, you can see it's definitely got some thickness to it and it does have really nice coverage. So, Initially, my issue with this is I would put it on like with a brush or a dry sponge or something and it would look really dry from the get-go. Like very obvious heavy makeup and especially like in the colder weather, you know, I'd have um, like little flaky patches maybe and a little bit more dryness to my skin overall and it would really cling to those dry patches and you know, just not really a very good look. So I kind of was like, okay, I don't think I like this. So I put it aside for a while. And then more recently, 
I picked it up again and I was like, I think I should give this one more try. So I've been applying it with a damp blender sponge the last maybe five to six times that I've used this and it that really helps with the dryness. When I put it on with my damp, um, like my Real Techniques sponge or something like Beauty Blender-ish like that, um, it really helps this sink into the skin a lot better and it, it looks a lot more skin-like and it doesn't look so thick and dry and heavy. So I, I like that and I was actually kind of excited when I found a method of application that worked nicely with this. So I was like, okay, maybe I can start actually getting use out of this foundation now. But something that hasn't changed about this, something that was an issue for me before when I first started testing it out and it still remains an issue for me now is the fact that the Stay Matte Promise totally goes out the window for me after just a couple of hours. I put this on before and it looked dry right after application. Within a couple of hours, there'd still be like maybe a few flaky patches where I had some dryness on my skin, but everything else, like my T-zone and just, you know, my face overall would be so, so shiny and greasy. And that's still the case. Even when I apply it with a damp sponge, which does help kind of like shear it out a little bit and give you a little bit of like a thinner, less cakey application, it still just, it does not stay matte at all for me. Like the, the name is a big no because it just, it doesn't do that. It does not hold up at all. I mean, it, it looks so oily after just, you know, a couple of hours wear, even on a day when I'm not really like doing anything all that strenuous, even a day when I'm just kind of around and, you know, just existing, it just gets so shiny. And it's one of those things where I'll notice it getting shiny, I'll blot it, and then, you know, within another like two hours, it's shiny again. And, you know, I'll blot again. The same thing just keeps happening throughout the day. If you're less oily than I am, because I've mentioned before, I do have very, very oily skin. If you're maybe more like combo skin or just not quite as like seriously oily, you might enjoy this because I have heard people say that they do like this. I would say, you know, maybe if you want to give this a try, I would totally recommend applying it with like a damp complexion sponge of some kind and that it might work for you, you know, if you don't have the same level of oil control issues that I do. But for me, this just, this didn't live up to its promise at all. So it's a no. Moving on to another face item. This is the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer Mist. It's, it has 12 hour power, electrolytes, energize, and hydrates skin. Uh, it claims to be oil free, silicone free, and alcohol free. I got this because I was really looking for a cheaper alternative to the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. I had gotten a little sample of that a while back and I love that product. I mean it just, it does such a good job of, you know, you spray it on after you're done with your makeup and it takes away any trace of like a powdery finish, but it really kept my face matte throughout the day. The full size bottle of that is like, it's like 30 or, it's between 30 and 40 dollars I think. I mean it's just, it's expensive and as much as I like the product, like I still can't totally justify spending that much money on just a bottle of spray. So I've been on the hunt for a more affordable alternative and this kind of sounded like it might be along those lines. So first of all I love the scent of this. I like the scent of this better than the Smashbox one. Um, smells like straight up cinnamon gum, like you just opened up a fresh pack of Big Red or something. It smells delicious. And it has a nice fine mist. Um, it feels really nice going on. It feels kind of cooling and a little bit hydrating and refreshing. So I do like that about it. But bottom line is this just gives such a dewy finish that it just... 
when you combine the dewiness of this with just the natural oils that my skin is kind of making throughout the day, it translates to basically an oil slick on my face. I think that those of you who like a dewy finish might actually really enjoy this because, you know, it does feel really nice going on. Like I said, it smells, mm, it smells fantastic, but just it's a little bit too dewy for me and my skin type. So if you're oily, I would probably steer clear of this. But Von D Liquid Lipstick, this shade is called Outlaw. And it's a little like sample size that I got in one of these Sephora Give Me More Lip Kits that they had out a couple of holiday seasons ago. And the shade is beautiful. It's like a nice tomato-y red, really pretty. And I was so excited to get a little sample of this because I've heard so many people talk about these and say how much they love them. And, you know, if I hadn't gotten a sample, I might have, like, broken down at some point and tried a full-size one just because I was very curious about them. But then I got this sample, which was awesome. And it's especially good because I ended up not liking this. Okay, the color is beautiful. As you can see, it's very, very opaque. I mean, like super full coverage on the lips and the staying power is like awesome. You know, these don't go anywhere. These just, these stay on until you take them off. But to me, like this just feels so dry. Two thirds into the day, I still have color on my lips and you know, the color's pretty and everything, but I just want to take it off because it doesn't feel good to me. So... That was kind of disappointing. Again, I know a lot of people like these, so I'm not saying nobody would enjoy these. For me, I just feel like, you know, there's a lot more comfortable matte lip products out there. Actually, I just did a video on um, comfortable matte lip products, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can check out that video. But these are just kind of what I was referring to in that video when I was talking about dry crackly, uncomfortable matte lip products. This just, the, the texture, I just can't, I can't get past the feel of it. We have some products that, like, I was so excited for these, you guys. Like, you don't even know how excited I was to try these because I'm a huge fan. I just noticed some more powder on my pants, like, Anyways, I'm a huge fan of the original NYX Butter Glosses. I have quite a few of those. I love all of them. I just think they're wonderful. And so, maybe like a year or so ago, they came out with these Intense Butter Glosses. And I was really excited to try them. I, again, heard a lot of good things about them, but... You know, I was like so pumped to try them, so... And they have a beautiful shade range, so... And they've like since added even more shades, so they have a lot of colors to choose from. So I'm um, just, I went and looked at the display, you know, and these were the two shades that I picked up. Um, this one is called Spice Cake, and this one is called Black Cherry Tart. And I'm just gonna swatch them. They come with like a nice, um, like a long, flat doe foot applicator. And I'm just gonna swatch both of these so you can see what we're working with. Okay, so this is Spice Cake and this is Black Cherry Tart on the end. Really, really pretty colors. The pigmentation is great and they feel nice going on. They have a like a nice smooth rich texture. So, you know, those are all things in their favor but oh my god, these are just these do not stay put on my lips at all. Like, they're so messy. Even when I'm, like, really trying hard to be careful and mindful of these being on my lips, they just get everywhere. And that's not really an issue that I have hardly ever with lip products. I've tried putting on, like, the thinnest layer possible. I've tried, you know, blotting it a bunch of times. I've tried just, you know, checking it religiously to make sure. And it just, like, nothing works. I mean, no matter how careful and, like, vigilant I'm being, these will get all over my teeth. They will bleed. Like, 
outside my lip line. They'll just get like random places on my face. And, and I try whenever I'm wearing these to be careful because they are, you know, they're a glossy texture as you can see and they really don't ever dry down. And I think that's really why I have a problem with these because they are so bold and so pigmented and they remain just kind of a, like a glossy, slick texture. You know, they spread very easily, which is nice for the application, but in terms of staying power, they just, they don't last, they just, Oh, they get everywhere. So, yeah, I was really disappointed in those who say I wanted to love them. I, like, tried so hard to love them. And for a while, I had kind of a love-hate relationship with them. But honestly, at the end of the day, it's just a lot more hate than love, if I'm being honest with myself. So You can see also that I wiped off the NYX Intense Butter Gloss swatches and they definitely leave a stain behind which can be a good thing in terms of you know staining your lips and leaving some color behind on your lips but the problem is if they get elsewhere on your face they also will stain the other parts of your face so if you get a little smudge somewhere it's not like you can just really easily wipe it off and be done with it like uh, one time I was wearing this one and I got a little smudge like down here kind of above my chin and I tried to wipe it off and then I just had a big like pink blotch where it had like stained my face so yeah that's another thing and last I was gonna say last but not least but I should say last and least because I'm going to end this with the product that I dislike the most out of everything that I've shown you today. This is this Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Lip Color. I'm not even positive if they still make these because I did get this quite a while ago and I'm not totally sure if they still make these but I do feel like I saw them pretty recently in Rite Aid. So I think they're still available but I'm not 100% positive on that. But when I was going through products and deciding what I wanted to include in this video, I came across this and I just, I couldn't do this video. This video would just not be complete if I didn't just mention this because this is probably the worst lip product I have ever tried. Actually, when I bought this, it was kind of before the whole liquid lipstick craze became a thing. And so I just thought this was like a traditional gloss. So I just picked it up. I thought the color was pretty. It is a pretty color. And, you know, I, I put this on. You can see it right there. The color is pretty. And it, it goes on kind of like a gloss, but within no time, within like five minutes, I mean, this dried onto my lips like the most, it, it was just the, the most like hard, dry, brittle thing I've ever experienced on my lips. Like it just, it felt so, so awful. It literally felt like all the life was just being sucked out of my lips. And it looked that way too. It looked so like dry and crackly and flaky. And it did start to kind of flake off after a while. And it kind of, it felt like, you know, if you use too much hairspray and your hair gets like crunchy and brittle. That's kind of how my lips felt when I had this on. Something else about this particular shade is it does have some like really fine shimmer in it which became, it's not like super visible in the swatch here, but once it dried down, the shimmer became a lot more obvious. So I basically just had really dry, flaky, sparkly lips, and the little flecks of sparkle were kind of, you know, just highlighting the places where the product had sort of flaked off, and it just was not a good look, not a good feeling, not a good experience at all. So I had to give this a mention because this, like I said, is probably my most hated lip product of all time. So I couldn't do this video without throwing it in there. That does it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for taking the time to listen to me talk about products that just haven't worked for me. If you have any products that really stand out in your mind as just 
being kind of awful, <laughs> feel free to share them down below. I'd love to hear about your experiences. And also, if you like any of these products that I talked about today and you think that like maybe I'm doing something wrong with one of them or you like have any suggestions for a way that I might like it better, um, feel free to let me know that as well because I've seen that happen in other videos. Um, sometimes someone will say, oh, I didn't like this product and then someone in the comments will tell them, oh, like if you do this with it, it might work better and then I've like seen the person making the video update later and say, oh, I tried this and it worked for me. So if you do have any suggestions or any thoughts on any of the things that I talked about today, let me know and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.